Today, we have two motorcycles that represent a balance of versatility and performance. The updated 2020 Triumph Street Triple RS and the all new 2020 KTM 890 Duke R. Our street testing includes a ride from the Cycle World offices over the mountains of Southern California, where we'll finish by ripping laps at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway, putting every performance aspect of these machines under the magnifying glass. All right, guys, we are back from two epic days of testing. I got senior editor of Motorcyclist, Adam Waheed here. Adam, those days were rad, weren't they? Well, Michael, it's always good to, you know, twist some throttles with you and spend some time aboard two high-performance motorcycles like the Triumph Street Triple and the KTM 890 Dugar. Oh, for sure, we had a blast. And, you know, just to get right to it, man, these motorcycles, although they're in the same class, and kind of have the same goal. They're different approaches to getting there at the same time. The, the Triumph, as we talked about on our test, is very well polished. It's been around for many, many years. KTM is a bit newer to the class. Obviously, it's the offspring of the 790, and it's a little bit more rowdy and rough and tumble, and, and that kind of goes along with the engine characteristics. Obviously, one's a parallel twin, and, and the other one's an inline triple, and the characteristics of those motors, too, identify it. Yeah, I mean, you know, Triumph's been building that inline three engine for, you know, well over a decade, 14 years now, I think. And really, when you think about it, they invented that whole inline three, modern inline three format. You know, now a bunch of other companies mm -hmm. in different countries are making that kind of engine configuration. It's all really because of Triumph, because yeah. of how smooth it is, how much power it has per CC, the packaging of it. Yeah. And then KTM, of course, you know, they are known for their twin cylinder engines, specifically their V-twin engines, but they wanted to get with the time, so they came up with the compact parallel twin, mm -hmm. hot rodded it in the 890 Duke R, and here we go. Yep, for sure, and and to get right to those power figures, the Triumph, obviously it had a little bit more peak power, 115.2 horsepower at 11,800 RPM, a little bit lower torque than the KTM, mm -hmm. 56.2 foot-pounds at 9,200 RPM. Now that KTM, even though it has that larger capacity, just the parallel twin uh, nature of the bike, it made 106.1 horsepower at, at 9,400 RPM and 63 foot-pounds of torque. So we have 124 cc displacement here, and you have two very different characteristics like we talked about. Mm -hmm. And to take advantage of that extra peak power that the Triumph has means taking advantage of its extra revs, the extra 2,000 RPM that the motorcycle has. And, mm -hmm. you know, we felt that out on the road, huh? Yeah, I mean, that Triumph, you know, it just has one heck of a power band. I've always loved that inline three. It's smooth, tons of torque, the sound on those things. And very, very tractable, like oh. really easy to ride. Yeah, I mean, ever since they came in with that engine, it's been smooth and they've been steadily refining it, you know, adding some displacement to it over the years. And yeah, it's just, a, it's a really polished, engine yet you know at the same time that 890 duke r that's the lc8c engine they should have came out they should have skipped the 790 and went right to that thing you know that, <laughs> that thing is just yeah. a powerhouse yeah it, it just packs a punch doesn't it it's a little bit more rough and tumble if you will than than the triumph and i think you even noted for me in the story is you said that it almost feels like it wants to explode at any rpm yeah but, it feels like it's there's race gas in the yeah. engine it's like ah right you know and, and you feel that, like, to me, when we're out on the road, specifically, we're out on the road and you can kind of be in any gear. Mm -hmm. And you just get on the gas and the thing lifts to the sky and, like, it goes somewhere. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Triumph, kind of getting back to that extra RPM it has, you almost had to keep it in the right gear and really be able to spin the thing out. And it really liked faster sections of road or racetrack and be able to kind of let things loose. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, the 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 Triumph, it it's a... Great engine, no doubt, but it's just a little bit too conservative for me. You mm. know, KTM's really up the volume, I guess, on the performance and packing a punch and having some character that not only is like, sounds cool and feels good, but it actually, you know, 
it goes. Makes, yeah, it goes. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it's fun to ride. It's got tons of power, and I just really like what yeah. KTM did with the power band. Likewise, likewise. You know? And yeah. it's a different take. You know, we've been used to the the midsize inline three and the Triumph for a very, very long time now, and it's cool to taste something different. You don't don't always want to eat the same meal every day, and that's what KTM <laughs> offers right. with the eight ninety two right. car. Right, and it's it's not it's not a knock on the Triumph either. It's just it's like we said, it's been around for so long. It's so well polished, but it kind of maybe lacks that charisma that the KTM has. Like, I wouldn't say that. I, I like the character on the Triumph is awesome. It sounds cool, but like we just touched on it, just it's not as punchy in the face as the yeah. KTM. Yeah, you know no, for sure. And you know, moving along with that KTM, with that big punch and and, and power hit that we have. Thank God we have some good electronics on that. Like really race spec. I'm impressed with what KTM has done. Yeah, KTM, they fitted the 1290 Super Duke R electronics, you know, from 2020 model year, which was a significant update mm -hmm. for that bike. You know, historically KTM electronics have always been not good. <laughs> now they finally have They've a done contemporary a really good job. electronics package that allows you to ride the bike hard. Right, it makes me feel like with these electronics, like I say, it's race back. And, and what I mean is it's, it's a package that allows you to extract performance out of the motorcycle rather than feeling like you're getting held back by it, right? It's not so much a safety net. Well, exactly. Well, the greatest thing about the KTM electronics is just the amount of adjustability. You know, they deem it, you know, slip control is what they're, they call their traction. it. Yep. Yeah, and you can adjust it. I think from one to eight was the- I think it's eight, nine. One to nine yep. increments. Plus off. And I remember when we were riding it during our first ride, you know, you really like setting two or three, mm -hmm. and I like setting four. On and the racer. Yeah, of course, man. <laughs> so, you know, having that adjustability in the bike to tweak it based on your skill level or level of comfortability with wheel spin is huge. And yep. that was really the thing that really made me not like the Triumph was just its basic it's rudimentary very basic, yep. electronics package where, you know, even in track mode, that thing is just pulling back the power, pulling back the power. The only really way you can feel the performance of the Triumph is by disabling Turning it. it off. Yeah, yep. it has to be off. When we were at the enough. racetrack, specifically when, when I went out to collect data and like really kind of get after it at the racetrack, I turned everything off. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. It's interesting that this platform, this Triumph Street Triple platform has been around for so many years. Mm -hmm. And everything is very well polished and kind of feels like everything has its place. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of have the electronics that maybe feel a little bit aged. They are totally feel aged. You know, it's funny because Triumph really, to be fair, they've never really had to come up with an electronics package because, you know, organically that engine- is so easy to ride. It's so easy to ride. Yep. You know, when you have TC off, if you spin the tire on that thing, it has a good connection between throttle, engine, and tire. You really can, mm -hmm kind of almost manhandle that thing without TC. So to be fair, Triumphs really never even needed to have traction right. control on that bike. And you know, for KTM to come along and really advance things, that's what's really gonna yeah. be pushing Triumph here. And they're gonna have to find a solution to that very yeah, quickly. For sure, for sure. And you know, I feel like it's such a similar, this, this whole comparison is such a similar aspect because when we start talking about the chassis, it's sort of the same thing too. Like the Triumph feels so, neutrally balanced, just very well riding, not and composed, doesn't really get upset. Mm -hmm. And the KTM is a little bit like the motor is, like it's a little bit more rowdy, it's it's agile, it's I think it's 12 pounds lighter, fully fueled and you feel that and it's active. Like mm -hmm. it wants to change directions and do things, mm -hmm. but then at the same time you're rewarded with more feel, more feel from the chassis. What's actually happening underneath you? Yeah, I mean, again, Triumph, you know, Great bike, but that whole chassis, it's, it's an older chassis, you know, where they really go down to brass tacks. It's the same kind of chassis from the old Daytona 675, mm -hmm. just tweaked and, and evolved mm -hmm. a little bit. Where KTM, they have something a little bit more unique and a little different, and they yep. have that high spec suspension on there. Even the tires, mm -hmm. I, I like the, the, the Michelin, Michelin tires a little bit yep. more than the Pirellis, and I love Pirelli tires, but you know, I feel like Michelin did really good with their new a uh, power cup street tire, and then even the ergonomics, the ergonomics on the KTM. The KTM much, feels like a modern bike. You feel your elbows are up, you're in a very aggressive attack position, mm -hmm. not overly so, 
but the Triumph just, it feels very old school in the ergonomics yep. package. And you never know about this until you ride until you ride the KTM. The KTM. Yep. Like, oh, this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Well, you know, like it, the Triumph does a lot of positives. I know that, that you say the chassis is old and it might be, but at the same time, where I want to come from is like, it's a really well-balanced motorcycle. It it's, is. It's, it's composed. It does everything really well. If you're gonna go for a long haul, you're gonna go log a few hundred miles, or even maybe just ride to and from the office, your commute, I'd probably pick the Triumph. You know, the foot pegs are a little bit lower, the bars swept back a little bit more, so it does have that more relaxed feel, and it has a softer seat, too, mm -hmm. to where it's just a little bit more comfortable. Like you say, the KTM is a little bit racier, like it has, 2020 performance in mind. Yes, yes. I would agree with you completely. You know, if I was the kind of rider who, who was going to do a little bit more utilitarian style riding, you know, touring on the freeway, going from point A to point B, and not so focused on that pure sport handling experience, I could totally go with the Triumph, mm -hmm. no problem. But for the times when you really want to wick it up, and if you are a little mm -hmm. bit more, you know, Aggressive. experienced, yep. high performance style rider, just the attributes that the KTM offers are just a yeah, no-brainer to me. Totally. And you know, when we were at the racetrack too, just kind of those things that were put under the microscope, it's the same thing, like the brakes. They're very similar components. They both have the MCS mm -hmm. master cylinder, which is a really neat touch that yep. actually allows you to adjust the feel and the throw of the lever to mm -hmm. your liking. I really, to have that on two relatively well-priced middleweight nakeds, that's rad. MCS on everything. I love that. that <laughs> yeah, that I agree with cylinder. that. But, where I'm getting to is the KTM still had even more feel there too. I thought that the Triumph, it just felt a little bit wooden. Like when I reach for the brake lever, especially at the racetrack, as I'm driving into the corner, mm -hmm. I just felt like I don't really understand what's happening at the, at the calipers. The KTM for sure has a more aggressive brake pad compound. You can feel it, it's real obvious. But really the biggest thing to me was just the KTM's ABS. It was, yeah. you know, the Triumph's no, ABS right. is again, it's very rudimentary. Yep. And that KTM. It wants to intervene at every, oh, yeah. Totally. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was no offset. You we can't even turn it, turn it off. off. Yeah. No, ABS is, is always on on the Triumph. You know, obviously, you know, the European Union has established that law in 2020 where all street bikes have to have ABS. Yep. You cannot disable it. But, you know, that kind of takes the fun out of that Triumph. And the crazy thing is that Triumph, like that thing has a great slipper clutch, great chassis. You're going to want. Yeah. You want to whale You want to be able to slide and do that yep. stuff. It's got the chassis to do it, but because you can't turn off the ABS, you'll never be able to tell. Right, so, exactly. You know, if I made that Triumph mine, we would pull that fuse <laughs> and not have ABS. <laughs> On a closed course. Closed course, professional <laughs> riders only. All right, so we got to talk about price a little bit too. Both these motorcycles, middleweight naked, mid 12,000 bucks. In my opinion, might be a little bit pricey for a middleweight naked, but at the same time, what you're getting is you know, high envelope performance. The KTM, $12,439 as tested. That's with the additional packs that, that gave us the adjustability at TC and mm -hmm. some things like that. The Triumph, 12,850 mm bucks. -hmm. Adam, what would you choose? For me, you know, obviously I've always loved the Triumph Street Triple 675 and now 765, but you know, KTM really has something special on their hands in the 890 Duke are and for it being a little bit less expensive i mean this not very it's minor. very yeah i even if it wasn't less expensive even if it was a thousand bucks more i still would buy the ktm because it's just that much better of a motorcycle for you know a performance minded rider who wants to go fast yeah no for sure i, I I'll be honest with you i'm in the exact same boat you know the ktm to me encompasses everything I want out of a middleweight naked. Like, it's polished, it has enough to where, yeah, you can use this for, for everyday riding or mm -hmm. whatever you wanna do, but then it packs that little bit of rowdiness and hooliganism mm -hmm. that I want out of a middleweight naked, so. Absolutely, it's a motorcycle that you're probably not gonna grow old or grow tired of as oh, fast no way. as the 765. 765, you ride it for you know a couple months a year, like, ah, maybe I should get you know the 1050. Speed triple, you know, this 890 Duke R, you're gonna want you're gonna, it for a You're while. gonna hold on yeah, to it. Yeah, it's a cool bike. All right, guys, there you have it. You have two class leading middleweight naked machines. Mm -hmm. We have the Triumph. The Triumph's been around for many years as the 675. Now the 765, it's well polished. It's a very just 
neutral overall all-around performing motorcycle. Chassis is really settled. Like you said, we have that engine that's very tractable. It's still entertaining, and it's got a little bit more comfort than the KTM too. So, you know, if you're looking for a motorcycle that's your do-it-all machine, I think the Triumph is, is definitely mm -hmm. a worthy look. But KTM has come in in 2020 and delivered the 890 Duke R, which is just performance-minded in every aspect. You got a rowdy engine, you got a chassis that really communicates to you really well, and electronics that kind of complement it all. Yes. You know, obviously it's got those racy ergonomics that we talked about, but for the class and what we were looking for, KTM 890 Duke R steals the show and wins this comparison. If you guys like this video, be sure to give us a like, comment, we want to hear from you, and subscribe to the Cycle World YouTube channel. Go ahead and go over to cycleworld.com, read the full story, and we'll see you next time.